Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Hustle League round 32 group D losers match. I don't have the winners match. I have some duplicate replays of the losers potentially. Anyway, this is Bloomster versus Flying. Upper left hand corner, we got Flying starting as the yellow Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we got Bloomster starting as the green turn. Is this Invader? I'm wondering if this is Invader. This is Invader. So one of the BSL two player maps, you've got the eggs, which are super popular these days. Investment guys on the low ground. Interestingly enough, if we see ZVZ, we might see some of that newfangled ZVZ distance mining gas thing happening here. Uh, low ground, you got two egg. This kind of reminds me of uh, Revolver as well, where this interrupts 973 a bit, but it still makes vultures very, very strong, especially attacking the natural expansion. And being that it's a two-player map, and then upper right-hand corner, you got the Vespine Geyser, bottom left-hand corner, you got the Vespine Geyser, and some minerals. One problem for Zerg on this map is where do you grab a third base? This is essentially your third base, and then past that, it's wide open territory where you really need absolute map control to win. So I feel like as Zerg, it's a very difficult map for Zerg in my opinion, and really you need to play, you don't have any guaranteed fourth base, which to me, often, because if you think about like, how do you defend that top right hand corner against Medic Marine, and look at this Medic Marine pocket ball right here. You really need defilers up rapidly and grabbing a fourth is just dangerous. Granted, you have the, it's just, it's a challenge. There's a lot of swarming opportunities. So I feel like there's some advantages for Terran here where they can go 1-1-1, one, one, one. they can go mech, uh, they can do transitionary standard stuff that's very, very strong. And for Zerg, you really need to win it in some form of three-base play, which in my opinion means you have to play very, very aggressive on Invader to start, which suggests maybe three-hatch play or three-hatch Mew to play, uh, more all-in-ish, maybe drops, something along those lines. Anyway, it looks like we're going to see a... 204-ish, 45-ish gas there from flying, which suggests we are going to see a Mutalisk opener. I'm not sure what the lag was like between Bloomster and flying here, so we'll have to we'll have to see overall. But SCV Scout able to sneak in. It should, based on the extractor timing, recognize that this is going to be more of a two-hatch opener, and the drone actually able to sidle in. This is significant that the drone is able to walk in and confirm that there was no gas. Gonna get the gas cancellation. Actually, might save its life without the second marine. So gonna be able to sneak in, get the scout, spend 33 resources, and exit right back out. What a hero. And a little bit worse for the wear. He's gonna have a few bullets and his... Oh, that overlord needs to get out of there, though. Um, that's actually another thing I thought about on this map just now, is it's also very, very difficult to position this overlord in such a space where you can see the marine not that i think it works against anything else zerg needs to do on this map but it's very difficult to position the overlord as well to get a look at the early game uh, marine count to know what you're going up against there anyway second barracks and refinery dropped we do have the tech to layer two zerglings out i'm expecting a few more zerglings out of flying we'll have to see i think a few additional zerglings well might not be necessary depending on the positioning here. Well, no, don't, doesn't quite see it. I don't know that Bloomster is going to exploit this. We saw him attempt to in the initial match. And let's see if he moves with six Marines. This is a pretty good map for him, honestly, to try to do this, to go for that assault at the natural expansion and catch a Zerg under producing Zerglings and defenses in the early game. And this is an amazing map for it as well, honestly. So especially because there's a lot of area to lose the Marine force off uh, the initial push and we do see so we got the refinery stim being upgraded layer just finishing it is going to be an in-base third hatchery so 2.5 hatch kind of what they call it these days it's going to give a little bit more larva a little bit more, more map control and that's really i think lent towards the the style of map and the, it's kind of been the movement for play but i'm wondering almost if uh i i feel like it's a good build opener here considering all the challenges of invader for zerg at large you need the more you need the additional larva and the map con, uh, map control here in the mid game and that's exactly what 2.5 hatch gives you medic hanging out additional medics being produced interesting so we get, we already have the initial two but we have another round to go up to four to start a single sunken colony on the front i'm wondering if this is going to be an, a medic dive blockade to try to absorb this must i think this must be no this is a break okay interesting so usually with busts, you don't see an overproduction of medics. You do see the fire bats to start, but you don't see the four medics. And I'm not sure if that was a mistake on Bloomster's part. 
trying to go for that Overlord on the front. I don't know if that was a mistake on Bloomster's part, or this is just part of his style of doing this rush. Second Creep Colony gonna be dropped. The Spire is a ways off finishing, so this is pretty good timing for him, and I don't see additional Zerglings being built. So Flying might get caught off guard by this. This could be a quick one. Overlord on the corner as well. Evolution Changer Chamber dropped to the front. That Overlord, oh, does get taken out. That's not gonna supply block flying. That Evolution Chamber is occupying these units for a bit, and that was a worthy sacrifice to allow the double sunken callings to finish, but I still don't know that this is gonna be sufficient. This is, again, four medics here on the front, and the Sutton Colonies can't have trouble targeting. The Firebat moving the way up, no additional Zerglings are produced. The Mutalists are on the way, but Bloomster able to breach the natural expansion. Now pressing up towards the main, getting a few additional drones. Keep in mind with this, it looks like he also cut some SCVs. So he needs to get, this is a do or die situation where he needs to make it work. We've got some Mutalisks that are gonna spawn right on top of this and we'll see if the Mutalisks are able to defend with the drones and wipe out what's left here. So flying, dropping, all sorts of units right here. But honestly, after this, this isn't the worst situation because Bloomster is still at 21 workers. He's only lost two sunken colonies. He can rebuild that pretty rapidly. And do we have any sort of... Okay, we do have some turrets being built here back at the main, but this is four medics that are going to get sacked. That wasn't a lot of drones that were killed, so I'm going to say that this wasn't a, a great attack. Let's see if the medics get cleaned up, though. That'll be kind of the side trick of it. So at least one dies. Only three Mutalisks working their way out, but well defended from flying, I have to say, altogether. I thought that was going to be a game-ending maneuver. And Bloomster, not quite able to get it done. Exciting season thus far. That last medic going to get picked off, and this puts Bloomster in a very defensive situation. And on top of that, all of a sudden, he's behind in the worker count. Rough. Plus one weapons on the way. Hydral Sten getting dropped. Interior to base before Queen's Nest. So it looks like we are going to see some Lurker follow-up. One Usually on any other map, I would say, okay, Flying can potentially walk away with this. But Bloomster, I think because it is Invader, I'm not saying he's in a winning situation here, but I think he's in a more recoverable situation than he would be on, say, another map like Polypoid or somewhere else where Flying could turn this just into a, a walk of grabbing uh, additional bases. Also Flying... Uh, sticking with just the three mutalists, so cutting a few corners here, it looks like not okay, just now getting it, just using them to scout right this second to see if there's anything, any sort of free kills he can get. Third and fourth barracks coming down fairly late, and I don't see a factory anywhere behind this either for Bloomster, which that could be problems because this usually you want a factory started well before this. And I don't see that factory anywhere because he's still playing economic catch-up. And that means these Mutalists potentially for flying and also the the Lurkers to follow it up could be very, very strong. Flying trying to micro with... Ooh, so you really do need the five count to have the effective Mutalist micro because otherwise, if a medic's there, those Marines should last theoretically forever. But flying, despite the early game damages... Now up five supply, even on workers. Do we have, there's the factory. Ooh, that feels so late. With all that busting timing. Flying initially moved out of drone, but it looks like he's drawing that drone back. Still testing the perimeter with the Mutalisk composition. Moving some Hydralisks out in the field before morphing them to make sure they're at least getting out there a little bit more rapidly. So I wonder if this is gonna turn into a Mutalisk Lurker combo bust. <clears throat> and it's just going to be Hydra Lurk in the mid game. Which could be could be effective. Another Overlord picked off in forward field. I missed it on camera, but we see it was the one flying over here. Got picked off. I've also seen a lot of success. I, again, I don't know what the lag situation are here with that Muta Lurker combo uh, that some Zerg have been throwing out mid game. Bloomster moving out once again. It looks like the Mutalisks are, have spotted them. Bloomster trying to reposition. This could turn into a hold position Lurker attack from the rear. Mutalisk taking some free damage. They're lucky they didn't take a much larger damage set. But I gotta say, things might be okay for Bloomster overall. He's getting the starport up. Looks like he's dropped a machine shop, so maybe gonna go for a push off of this. But the Queen's Nest just dropping. And a fourth hatchery in base for flying. I think flying, recognizing the map scenario, he's gonna send out 
a drone maybe to bottom left ooh loses a mutalisk for free right there uh, moving cross position some lurkers moving up potentially for a hold position uh, uh, assault I believe maybe just gonna burrow on the ramp do hold position play right there a lot of lurkers moving up to that location the mutalisks still bleeding out flying taking a lot of damage for free is he just gonna dive on this actually I think the lurkers might have been spotted now moving up and keep in mind there's it's, it was just compsat to try to defend this and I'm not sure how much compsat is left we'll try to look at it really quick we've got two scans right there this is a lot of lurkers though and yeah bloomster slowly getting walked back and it looks like flying trying to execute that that muta lurker micro and I think he's just going to try to push it with hydra lurk from here he is building a hatchery bottom left one lurker being peeled off but this this is a very scary attack for us. Yeah, nice micro there by flying. Pulling it off right there in between. The siege tank on the front. Siege tanks can range, especially if they got siege tech upgraded. Able to get an assault right there. The lurker's just going to use this opportunity to dive, and that might have been a mistake. I think backing off would have been the better play here. But one lurker stands, and there's they're out of range. A lot of units wiped out here, and I don't know who to call at this stage. Bloomster's rebuilt his economy. He's got five barracks humming. He's dropping a second factory. I don't see the science facility out as of yet, so he still doesn't have mobile detection. Getting another siege tank out. We've got more lurkers out in the front. A bunch of hatcheries in the main. Still no tech to, to hive because we don't have the additional gas online. We do have that bottom base being built. Bloomster not really in a position where you can expend comps hat to find that, really. He's moving out some units on open field to maybe engage that. Let's see if flying is going to be able to hunt them down and salvage because these Marines are hop, skip, and a jump from taking that base out. <clears throat> Some lone Marines, I'm not sure what they were doing, dying out in the front there for nearly nothing and flying with a big bulk of units diving into the natural expansion. That siege tank quickly wiped out. And Bloomster's units cut a swath in between and really weren't all that well organized. So mo uh, what he needed on defense here at the main is not there and there's two turrets to defend and lurker is just walking into the natural expansion single sunk colony and some reinforcement should be able to deal with that and flying with a huge victory here in game one siege tank trying to defend up on the high ground but lurker is just hanging out at the natural expansion this is usually GG. I think Bloomster holding off because he does have that something colony at the natural. The Hydralists need to join this attack ASAP, though. Focus fire. Armor 1 is not up. It looks like there are enough medics where he doesn't have critical mass. So kind of an interesting situation where both players are swarming here. The drone's going to have to pull back out of the natural expansion. Flying still using some, losing some units. That lurker just needs to burrow. And that should help with some of that defense on position in the meantime a drone battle drone looks like a lurker had made it up to those lines the hydro's continuing to press in to the main pick off siege tanks they have superior numbers here and finally flying gets a large enough group of hydralisks to punch through and you can just see how efficient marine medic is against pure hydralisk here finally a science vessel out at the 13 minute mark just to die in the air not that there are any mutalists to worry about but I think Flying has it from here. He's got this bottom left-hand base up and running. He hasn't capped the gas there. I'm not sure that he needs to. He has taken a worker hit, but he's still able to get units peeling into the main. Yeah, there's GG. Crazy games. This se this is the group of death, I tell you what, because this is turning into some crazy games. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.